Great. Lily, you ready? Where's Lily? She's right here. She's very attentive. Almost out of my shot. You're out of the Lily can. Lily, come on. Come on, sweetie. Here we go. Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and Friends of Baylor. Well, it was an exciting Super Bowl with teams I don't care about. But I did enjoy the Super Bowl commercials. Mr. White in particular. Anyway, a uh, little bit, lots to talk about. Um, first of all, in the news uh, around COVID, mostly good news. Hospitalizations are down. Uh, minor problem, I will show you the wastewater data. It seems like it might be kicking up in a couple of hot spots in the southeast. Uh, deaths, you know, mortality continues to sort of be persistent uh, with about 3,000 people dying each week. So it's, you know, it's still a problem. Uh, interestingly enough, CDC has now added COVID shots to the routine vaccinations for kids and adults. And our friends at Johns Hopkins have finally decided they're no longer to be providing the data for the data tracker, which was really a great thing. Once again, uh, that should have been a public health uh, activity, but the Hopkins School of Public Health jumped in and really did a lot of great work collating all the data from around the world to, to track the um, pandemic. But apparently, there's no funding for it anymore, so I don't know. It's gone. Uh, as I mentioned, the cases, the CDC number, cases are pretty flat. And this is a, a good map. This is uh, uh, community levels. And the good news is it's mostly green. But you can see the, there seems to be a, a hot spot in Louisiana and Alabama and Mississippi. So there are some still some br places breaking out in the Midwest, up in the Northwest. So not out of the woods completely, but it, it's looking pretty good as we uh, approach the spring and summer. Hospitalizations are down nationally. You can see particularly for 70-year-olds, which is good. This is the only bit of concern. If you look at the wastewater data nationally, it's beginning to trend up again, just a little bit, not all that much, but enough to make you wonder. Uh, it's probably those hot spots that are collectively contributing to the increase. Here in Texas, Dimmick County and Harris County are both looking pretty good, both low rates. Case rates are, are, are low and, and improving down in Harris County, 66 down from 73. So. You can see last week, that was a uh, little bit more hot spots, and again, this week looking better. So we continue to improve in Texas. In the Texas Medical Center, case numbers down to 7.3%. Hospitalizations are pretty flat. You can see it sort of ticked up a little bit, but pretty flat. And the good news is in the wastewater data in Texas, in Houston, in the city, numbers are continue, continuing to go down. So that's all very good. The dominant species, is the XBB 1.5. We've been talking about that for a while. It's taken a while to, to dominate, but it's now 74% of, uh, of the isolates. Uh, BQ 1.1 is about 20% or so. And we've been watching this map, so that our Harvey balls are slowly but surely, it's gone from the east to the west coast. You can see now on the northeast, it's nine, XBB 1 is 93% of the variants. Still only 37.5% in the Seattle area and Washington Northwest, but it's going to get there. So XBB1 has slowly but surely outcompeted all the other variants and is the dominant variant around. And I, I got a lot of questions about, you know, is vaccine really efficacious? I don't know why I get this, but I keep getting it. And there's, you know, a ton of data that shows it. If you look at the case rates, now this is just the, the chances of getting infected. This has nothing to do with serious infection, just getting infected. There's a threefold benefit, a little over threefold benefit uh, for those who've been vaccinated versus those who've been unvaccinated. But if you look at uh, mortality, it's, it's dramatic. So in the Omicron surge, it was almost 30-fold benefit by being vaccinated here versus unvaccinated. And it's tapered off over time, but if you expand that scale just to look at what's going on at the end, you still get a, a 12 to 13 fold benefit if you're vaccinated for in terms of mortality. And here's the difference between vaccinated and blue versus vaccinated and boosted. There's a two and a half fold benefit for getting your booster. So once again, as people ask me, get vaccinated, please keep up with your booster shots. It actually is very, there's plenty of evidence to support uh, that it's useful. There are two really interesting papers. A lot of people have asked me well, there, what's new on the horizon for therapy. A uh, really interesting paper in, by the American Chemical Society that was looking at the structure 
of the spike protein. And what you can see in the spike protein, when it is binding to the receptor to get into a cell, it has this little thing that sticks out, that, that's the receptor binding domain. But if you incubate the, the spike with free fatty acids, it's in the closed position, so it can't interact with the ACE2 receptor. And that gave these uh, structural biologists a chance to figure out, well, if the free fatty acids do that, maybe a small molecule could do the same. And so they have been screening small molecules and have found about five or six of these that really at, at, at reasonable concentrations in the bloodstream could keep the inner, that little protruding part of the spike in the closed position so it couldn't uh, interact with the ACE2 receptor. We've talked a lot about the structural biology and this is a way of approaching it uh, in a very specific way to try and figure out what can, what can we do to prevent the spike protein from being active and that seems to be one potential strategy. So, you know, that'll be interesting for new small molecules uh, uh, approaches. Then there is one very interesting paper in the New England Journal this last week from uh, Canada and Brazil. And it was a really interesting paper because it was very uh, highly efficacious taking a, a look at pegylated interferon. And interferon is one of those naturally produced compounds that helps the body uh, fight against viruses. And so, what they looked at was about 2,000 people, 1,000 in each group, who were just coming to an outpatient clinic. They looked at the, the number of people who showed up with what was consistent with COVID, and then they randomized them to one group that got a placebo and one group got one injection of pegylated interferon. And what was remarkable, it was, it was really effective. Now, remember, mostly, most of these people were vaccinated, almost 85% uh, of them, so there's a low issue with them getting really seriously ill anyway. But when they did this study in 1,000 people, there were about 50 people in 1,000 of the placebo group who ended up either in an emergency room or hospitalized versus 25 who, of, of those people who just received a single uh, dose of, of pegylated interferon. That's a pretty impressive response. Uh, easy to do, single injection as an outpatient if you showed up at a doctor's office. This is not approved by the FDA yet. It, again, it was a study done by some scientists from Canada and Brazil. Uh, so it's gonna have to go through the approval process. But again, gives us another option besides Paxlovid for potential therapy if and when it gets approved by the FDA. So I wanna uh, end today with a bunch of shout outs. First of all, uh, the rankings for our NIH funding came out this year. Every year it comes out and it's compiled by a particular organization. And once again, uh, Baylor College of Medicine ranks number one in the state of Texas, number one in the region, uh, and did incredibly well. Uh, again, this is a cum accumulation of all of the work that our scientists do. In addition to um, that, we had many that were in the top 10 in the nation, and genetics for the men on umpteenth year has ranked number one in NIH funding uh, in the country. So congratulations to all of our scientists who really make that work. Uh, the second uh, person I'd like to point out uh, is uh, 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 Dr. Indra Meisereker, who was just uh, elected into the fellowship of the American Academy of Microbiology. This is a very important society that recognizes her outstanding scholarship. Congratulations to her. And, and then I want to give a giant shout out to this uh, person uh, who developed a really cool healthy eating uh, and low, uh, low inflammatory nutrition guide. Uh, that was developed by Baylor and for, uh, for folks in particular who have troubles with their uh, nutritional status. And this was developed by Madhuri Vasudevan, and she's an endocrinologist in the Department of Medicine, and she worked with a team at Baylor and Harris Health to develop this cookbook. It's very cool. I'm planning on using it myself. And then uh, finally, I want to end on a little bit of a somber note. You know, for the last 10 days, we've seen an incredible tragedy in Turkey and, and Syria. The, more, the, the death count is now well over 40,000 people. It will end up being one of the worst earthquakes uh, uh, of the century. And so it's, uh, we're all uh, contributing. We're all trying to find ways to help. Uh, many of you have made uh, financial contributions. Uh, we've had faculty that are actually traveling to the region to pr try and help survivors. But in collaboration with the Turkish consulate, we are supporting a donation drive uh, for clothing and other supplies at multiple Baylor locations. And the details of this project can be found on our intranet, the InTouch website. 
So if you're interested in, um, in contributing something, please go to the website and figure out how to do that. Uh, our hearts, obviously, uh, and empathy goes out to that country, those two countries. What a, a real tragedy uh, being witnessed. But, you know, as a community, we celebrate our diversity. We have many folks who have relatives uh, in Turkey and Syria, and so our hearts go out to all of you. Anyway, have a great weekend, and I can't wait to see you next week.